Welcome to MDA, a formal approach to game design and research. Uh, this talk was presented on Wednesday the 31st of March by Dylan Sale from Two Lives Left. You can see some of Dylan's work um, with Two Lives Left at twoliveslift.com. This talk was organized through the Adelaide University Games Development Club and you can view more information about the Games Development Club at gdc.org.au. We hope you enjoy. Alright, so the talk I'm giving is MDA, a formal approach to game design and game research. Uh, it's based on a paper by these people, um, but I made slides uh, that kind of adapt the talk. Uh, so MDA is basically a, a formal approach to doing game design. So what does formal mean? Does anyone not know? It, it's not only mathematical, but like just a structured system for thinking about these kind of things. So game design and game research is just a structured way that we can think about it and communicate with other people uh, what we mean when we're talking about games. So some people don't like making things formal, especially creative things like game design. Uh, they, they think that by making it formal, you're taking some of the magic out. There's some sort of mystical voodoo that uh, is there, but by making it formal, you kind of take that out. Um, and they think that if it's a formal kind of thing, then it's just become some boring mechanical process of cranking a handle and out comes fun. Um, and some, some people think that by ha making it formal, you're restricting your creativity because you have to work within this formal framework. Um, but all these three things are not true. In reality, a formal system uh, just gives us a framework for expressing ideas uh, so that other people can understand it easily. We don't have to go back to first principles every time we want to talk about some sort of thing in game design. Um, it can help with brainstorming. If you can create, if you can communicate easily with other people, you can uh, quickly just jot ideas down on a whiteboard or something and everyone is kind of on the same page. Uh, and it lets us understand the rules so that we can break them sometimes. Uh, let us do interesting things uh, with the rules. And it also lets us analyze good games and see why they're good and learn from them. Okay. So uh, the benefits outweigh any possible complaints, I think. Okay, so MDA is the system that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, so M is for mechanics. Uh, D is for, not design, that's wrong. D is for dynamics, uh, and A is for aesthetics. Uh, okay, so this uh, system is really general. All games can actually be represented using this system, or all games we know about at least. Um, and the three parts are mechanics. So mechanics are what the player does. Okay, so. It, this is like the lowest level interactions that the player has with the system. So um, things like you roll a dice, draw a card, whatever. Uh, then we have dynamics. So that's what happens during the game. So that's the result of mechanics. So that could be in poker you bluff. That's a dynamic. That happens. It's not in the rules. There's no rule saying you can bluff. Uh, but it happens as a result of the mechanics of the game. And aesthetics are not just the graphics. So some people confuse aesthetics with uh, pictures or music. The aesthetics, when we're talking about in this uh, situation, we're talking about the effect that these dynamics have on the players. So they may feel um, uh, happy or elated that they beat the other team, or uh, they may feel frustrated because they lost or whatever. So these are all aesthetics that the game generates. So from a player's perspective, uh, they see mechanics when they first uh, start playing a game. So the game says push forward to run, push A to jump, uh, push whatever, left mouse button to shoot. So that's what they see. And then from the mechanics, they experience dynamics. So they start to see, okay, well, if I shoot down and, and, and shoot my, if I 
aim down and shoot my rocket, I can do a rocket jump. That's a dynamic. There's no actual mechanic that says that. It's just that rockets push you. If you shoot a rocket down, it pushes you up. That creates a rocket jump. So they start to see dynamics after a while once they've learned the mechanics. And then once they've got some dynamics, they can enjoy the aesthetics. You hope they enjoy the aesthetics. So that's things like they beat their opponents. Um, the game looks very pretty yet, uh, once you get to the third world. Uh, the music gets more intense and, and interesting, so something like Everyday Shooter. Uh, the story, you, as by, by passing some boss fight, you get a little cutscene, you might enjoy mm -hmm. that. Um, some games might just be a relaxing time, so something like SimCity, just sit back and kind of play it, there's no win or lose. And so on. Okay, so but from a designer's perspective, it's the other way around. Usually a designer thinks of a game in terms of an aesthetic. They think, I want to make a relaxing game that's a city builder and whatever. Or I want to make a competitive team-based game uh, with uh, shooting and rocket jumps. Um, and so they design dynamics to accomplish that aesthetic. So if you want a, a team-based game, you think of well, what are the kind of dynamics I want the players to have? So you want to have teamwork. You want to have uh, so like uh, concentrated points of interest for the whole team to, to go around, things like that. And then you think, okay, well, what kind of mechanics will work with that uh, or create those dynamics? So you have a capture the flag uh, mechanic and, or you have the escort mechanic or something like that. So the problem is that as a game designer, you only can control the mechanics. You write the rules. The mechanics are basically the programming and the code if you're writing a computer game or the rules if you're making a board game. But you have direct control over the mechanics. And the mechanics uh, influence the dynamics, and the dynamics influence the aesthetic. So you've got a target aesthetic, but you can only create dynamics. So this is a, a design with two degrees of separation. You're not directly controlling the output of what you're creating. So the problem with this is that that makes things hard, okay? Because these systems are usually fairly complex. You don't know exactly what players are going to do when playing the game. So that can mean that it's really hard to get the aesthetic you want from the mechanics you design. Uh, so this is why games usually take a few years to make because they spend a lot of time iterating and improving on the mechanics to get the aesthetics that they want. Okay. Uh, but normal designers, like graphic designers or whatever, get to just delete the pixels they don't like in the image or whatever, and there you go, the experience is improved. Um, so they only deal with uh, design by one degree of separation. Okay, so talking about aesthetics, uh, we've got, these are four possible types of aesthetics. So sensation might be one, so that is, um, so games with pretty graphics that you play to keep looking at more pretty graphics, basically. You like the sense that information that's giving you, so you play because of that. Uh, fantasy is uh, so things like role-playing games you play because you get immersed in the world and you want to experience more of that world. Uh, narrative is you're really interested in these characters and what they're doing. You want to find out what happens. Uh, but narrative can also be, for multiplayer games, the experience of playing a single game, so build up of tension as, as time counts down to whatever you're trying to do or the team's getting closer to your goal, so you have to push harder to try and push them back. That can be a narrative experience as well. Uh, challenge is, is basically what it says. Challenge, there's some sort of challenge and you have to develop enough skill to overcome that challenge. So then the game becomes about uh, testing your skills. There, there, here's four more. Fellowship, so that's uh, basically what all these Facebook games are, are, are dealing with at the moment. That's, or games like Little Big Planet. It's games where you can just sit around with a bunch of friends and play and maybe mess with each other, but uh, you're doing it in the context of a group of friends, so there's some sort of social framework. Uh, discovery, 